What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at the St. Vitus basement, and today we are here with Adam of the Almighty Vola. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Anytime, anytime. It's so awesome to have you here. Your newest album, Witness, is absolutely incredible. Thank you for a more amazing new music to end 2022 with. Was this considered to be just a continuation of applause of a distant crowd, or was this meant to kind of like signify a new beginning for Vola in a way? Uh, Not really a new beginning but more like a uh, progression. So we wanted, we didn't want to do a applause like 2.0, but we also didn't want to do something completely unfamiliar. So it just felt like the natural progression mm-hmm. from applause, mm-hmm. basically. Was there like sort of like a preconceived idea of what you wanted um, Witness to sound like in a way, or was this a very improvisational and a very experimental songwriting process? Uh, we had the idea of doing something different from applause in in the like in terms of um, making something more hi-fi, so more produced and modern. Because applause was really like. Um, feet on the ground you could say uh, a bit more dirty and raw production wise so witness like the idea we had before we started making it was just to make something more produced more yeah more hi-fi mm-hmm. now being that applause of a distant crowd was your first album with the band when you joined up with Volo, were you looking at the um in mazes album and being like okay this is how i have to play this is what the band is all about or were you kind of given full range to sort of bring in your own mix into vola i would say a bit of both like of course i, I still have to respect the sound that is already there when i when i joined but also i, I don't i didn't want to be just any any kind of drummer like someone who just could do that stuff technically but i also wanted to bring something to the table so when i joined it was like in the middle of the making of applause of a distant crowd so i made sure to fit into the vola sound but also to bring something extra and we were lucky because the way some of the songs were written were with electronic drums in mind and those ideas fit my playing with my cymbal stacks really well so it was just a perfect match kind of when it, and when it comes to drumming do you prefer to have music that's already present in a way and you write according to that or have you ever had like a whole drum pattern written and maybe the band can write over that in a way we've done both um there's some songs where asker has like created almost everything and just brings the song to us and then we just bring our own small touches to it and the song is fine as it is and then for example 24 light years started out with only drums where i made that pattern and then the rest of the guys made their stuff on top of it so it varies depending on the mood basically and and you led me perfectly into the next question because a lot of people feel that because drums don't have melody that there is no emotion behind it. But when you listen to Vola, I feel a lot of emotion in the rhythmic sense. Is every drum pattern we're hearing like rep- reflective of a particular emotion you were feeling or maybe reaction to the music that was already there? That's a that's a good question. I I, um, I have students when I do these tours and I usually talk about similar stuff with them. Um, about how to make drums kind of fit into the emotion of the song or make drums move the needle closer towards wherever the story of the song is or the intent of the song and i think it's there is a melody to drums there is emotion to drums like just imagine if if you say all right let's do some war drums and one guy does the marching snare and the other guy does like huge toms completely different moods both fit into the context of war but they paint a different picture where one might fit something more tribal and raw while the other one might fit like a typical british army from 300 years ago so that's just like a small demonstration of how your choices as a drummer can vary but there's a lot 
that you can do in terms of emotion. I mean, if we just go to what the heartbeat does rhythm-wise in horror movies, like that's that's a way to create uh, or work with emotions, expectations, and with progress in the story, just with a heartbeat, depending on what you do with that rhythm. Um, so I definitely try to bring that stuff into Vola songs. Now with some songs, you can do much more in terms of that and be really creative with it. Other songs, you have like this small space that you can work within. And there, uh, I would say my job is just to, like I said, push the needle as close as possible to what the intent of the song is with the means and the, and the um, lines that I have to work with. And when it comes to that emotion, do you prefer to maybe like, you know, because drums is such a technical instrument, you know, there's a very famous saying, your drummer sucks, your band sucks in a way. Is there ever a time, because the music is so technically impressive, has there ever been a time where maybe you had to like surrender your emotional element towards the drum set in order to fit the technical, like verse, like what the song sort of needed in a way? No, uh, I'm very careful to not enter that zone. Um, I think what, there's this thing that, that uh, the drummer from Porcupine Tree, Gavin Harrison, oh, often I love Porcupine Tree. Yeah, me too. He often talks about it, like the CPU of a drummer, where you should be cautious of reaching your like your your limit CPU wise. When you practice, it's totally fine to like really push yourself where you're only focusing on the actual technical aspect of it. But when it comes to the final the final product it's very important to have space over for the emotional part um, both creatively when you actually write it but also when you perform for the emotional part for connecting with the crowd for connecting with your with your bandmates um, and just for being open and aware because if you reach that point where you just have to surrender everything else to the actual technicality of it then you're you're maxed out and it's like a computer if you open one more window of of your uh, internet browser it's gonna crash <laughs> so so you don't want to be there because what if you drop a drumstick what if your bass player gives you a funny look or whatever you'll be crashing yeah so don't don't reach that point where you're all maxed out yeah. make sure you have some some headspace yeah the only crash that's good is the symbol right yeah. <laughs> yeah um when it comes to laying down your drum parts is it better if like everybody in the band i kind of have two these next two questions are fairly similar but do you prefer to write more alone in isolation when there's nothing between you and your instrumentation or do you prefer to come up with ideas when you're in the company of your fellow bandmates i think we're mostly used to creating stuff on our own since i live in sweden they live in denmark um, and just the way we've we've worked so far with songwriting, I think that's what we're most comfortable with. But we're definitely trying to to write more stuff together in in the same room. We've had some some sessions like that, and maybe that can give some interesting results. Yeah, and is it better? Be like because I feel like Vola has, um, for lack of better words, the music is very experimental. I would say. Is it better if everybody in Vola is sort of like on the same page when uh, when writing music? Or could all of you being in your own different worlds maybe actually help enhance what makes Vola Vola? I think we definitely benefit from being in different worlds, both um, geographically, but also like inspirationally, how we all listen to very different things. I think it's quite quite important to have that that possibility to travel into each other's creative space when when writing songs because that means that I can discover new things within our songs that come from whatever the, wherever the other guys might have gotten their inspiration from something which is completely unfamiliar to me. I think that's a big part of the actual Vola sound. And when it comes to like being your music being experimental in a way that has to make it a little bit easier to try new things when writing new music right yes 
Yes, um, but sometimes that can mean that you have too many choices. So you have to kind of learn how to limit yourself, but still staying experimental because you don't want to be all over the place and do just do crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, so we have to work with actually limiting our choices, but still making sure that we have the room to experiment and try new things. And going back to the emotional element of drumming, because, you know, drums is also one of the most physically demanding uh, instruments as well. I feel like you could sit with a guitar regardless of how you're feeling physically in a way, you know what I mean? Um, but with drums, has there ever been a time where maybe your emotional element that you're channeling into it doesn't really align physically in a way? Do, or does the emotion determine the physical nature that's in your uh, drumming? There can definitely be moments where... I have to get used to playing the thing physically before I can channel the proper emotion for it. But I would say that most often those things align. Um, like if, I, if I've already passed the barrier where I can technically play whatever it is that's expected there, then usually that thing matches the, the emotion and the way that thing is played matches the emotion. So if it's something really slow and heavy and hard hitting, then the way I can play it is with more distance between the hits, more power behind the hits. And what that will naturally do with the more distance from, um, from the actual from where I start hitting or moving towards hitting and the impact, that might cause me to be slightly behind and that might make the groove even heavier. So usually those things match. When they don't, I just have to figure out the technical aspect of it first and then work from there. When you play, if you were to play a song off of In Mazes versus a song off of Applause or Witness, do you have like maybe a different attachment to it as well, in a way? Yeah, some of those songs I have a different attachment to. Uh, specifically th those songs from In Mazes that we haven't played a lot. There's some of those that we've played quite a lot, and I've made them into my own thing, kind of. Um, but there is, there are some some songs that I just haven't spent enough time with because we haven't had to do that. Uh, so I definitely feel a different attachment to those. And uh, I have a few more questions for you. Um, if we, I'll start with the most difficult one. How do you know when you're finished with a song? Um, I think when, when you feel that the the song fulfills the the intent that you were going for when you started writing the song then I think you're you're really really close um, the trick is to know when you're finished with the actual polishing with with the small details but I think there you just have to you have to kind of make sure that those details are as close as possible to the intent that you had in mind with the song and if they land in the in that ballpark and they don't take away from the intent then you're finished with those as well so as long as you're you're in the right like area for whatever you wanted to say with that song then you can pretty much say that you're finished with that song that doesn't mean that you cannot still work on small details but I would say that you can work on those details afterwards when you play the song live when you when you further discover it because when you record a song versus when you play it live two years later there's gonna be stuff that has changed with you with the way you hear the song with the way you play so then you're gonna modify some things but that's just the the works of, of time so yeah. Fair enough. 
And uh, and then the final segment of the interview I wanted to talk about is the live show. You know, I had the privilege of watching you guys sound check and just the live visuals. It's just as beautiful as <laughs> yeah. the music itself. First off, was this a vision that Vola always had in a way, or was this like a vision that sort of came into play with when all of you like finished making Witness and like this sort of came into your minds after you know you already had the music written? So we've always known that we want to just up the live production, but we, when we wrote Witness, we didn't really know what we would do live-wise with the production. Um, these lights, it's it's um, from a, a Danish company called Vertigo that we've worked with. Um, we started working with them when we did the live from the pool um, uh, live uh, performance. So there, we we just managed to find this this company who usually does lights for like different expos and odd stuff like that. And we we thought, what if we actually use them for our live stuff? Tried live from the pool, which was a bit artsy and not like a normal concert. So it worked totally fine there. But then we thought, why not just bring this to actual concerts? And uh, that's how that collaboration started out. And now we've been working with them ever ever since. So it wasn't a planned vision from the start. It's something that appeared later on. And do you feel like that this creates now a different energy in your live presence as you do in your songwriting? Or being that you, know, you mentioned channeling the emotion and everything like that, it is a fairly similar energy playing live. You're just bringing it in front of an audience. Um, yeah, you're exactly. You're just bringing it in front of an audience. Um, the thing is, when you're when you're when you're on a on an album or on a studio recording, you only have the auditive aspect to think about. So, and you have like a larger group of people who lif listen in different ways to bring in. So. That kind of differs from the live live setting where you have more options, you have the visual stuff to work with. You, the the people there, they listen in one way, and it's specific for the live setting with the large PA, um, with the actual band playing in front of them. So the way that they will live it will be different, and the way that we have to bring them into our world and deliver those emotions will be different um, and also the, w the way the experience is for us actually playing those songs without worrying about if the take is good if it's if it's a good uh, good moment for it or what's going to happen after or before where we're just in the song that will impact the show itself um, and the lights themselves, I don't think they really change that much for us, other than just add further immersion to it. But they will help to create this complete picture for the for the audience to be drawn into. So I think live is is definitely a more emotional experience for for everyone. Do you think it brings a new layer of context to the songs as well, and maybe add a level of, of meaning in a way? Um, yeah, I definitely think so. Um, now, what that context or layer can be differs depending on who you are, but I definitely think it's it brings something more to the to the songs, um, which is why people should experience live music overall, because it's 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 just different than than listening to your to songs in your in your home definitely <laughs> definitely so before we go i want to thank you so much for your time today and for such an awesome conversation is there just uh, anything else with volo that you would like to promote uh with the release of witness in terms of tours or maybe more new music in the future if you're allowed to say of course um we um we're very happy to be here in in uh, in america for the first time and today here in in new york is the sh the last the last show of of the the North American tour, we're going to South America, and then we're ha we're having a little Danish tour in December. 
after that we're taking a little little bit of a break from touring to write new music so after the new year we're going to dive into maybe the next next album oh, <laughs> i can't wait to hear more well I want to thank you so much and welcome to the United States. And thank you for thank uh, you bringing much. your music to us. We really appreciate it. Everybody, we are here with Vola. Check out Witness if you haven't already. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.